uh, telling about the Huntington's from about 1887. And we'll start with um, <clears throat> Papa Harold, Harold Huntington, uh, and, and uh, look at his family. So his mom was Dora, and she grew up in Gibbon, Nebraska. And uh, she's right here in the front row. Um, and she was a very proper Victorian type lady as she grew up. Uh, she um, went to school in Gibbon at this school. <clears throat> That's about 10 miles east of uh, Kearney, Nebraska, where Carol grew up. And this is their mill. And this is Dora's uh, father, Albert, <clears throat> with his brand new Model T, probably in 1912. Uh, Watanpa. What Wattenpah, a good Dutch name. Uh, Dora did not have fun stories about her dad. For Christmas one day, he gave her a potato on a stick, which tells a story, I think, about how their family was kind of living on the margin. Yeah. And and Brian and I ate a crab apple from his, nourished by his, uh, well, whatever his remains were, because that was right near his grave. Yeah. It was then given. This is Dora. Dora, um, this was before she was married, probably um, before she just before she went to nursing school in Omaha. I'm just showing this as uh, much, yeah, much later it was her brother Frank and and uh, John and Dan and I all just admired him and considered him more like uh, Abraham Lincoln. He, he was a teacher at Chafee College, junior college. But um, here we are back at their wedding date, <clears throat> Carl and Dora, in 1905. And these are the, <clears throat> these are the uh, letters that, um, that they wrote. And they started out, dearest boy and dearest girl. And she just left training, she said, three years ago. So this was, she must have finished that in 1902. And um, very loving wordage about how she was sad to leave um, her friends in Omaha. And, uh, oh, Carl, I had the dandiest time over at Lake Manawa. So this little chatty, chatty. And 12. So now I'm here. It's, thir it's um, 13. Hmm. Must close for now. Love and kisses, Dora. So that was just before they were married. There they are again. So starting with <clears throat> uh, Carl's beginnings, uh, anybody find him in there? He's in the third row back. Fifth from the left. So there he is, as probably 60 years old in Chino. He was a carpenter, a machinist, um, and had a walnut uh, Grove, and he raised rabbits uh, for meals for food during the 30s and 40s, and had a devastating week that John probably remembers when all the rabbits died from tularemia, and he went into a deep uh, depression about that. So this is their uh, 50th anniversary uh, in 19 or 1955, and uh, yeah, she's happy. Um, you notice he's got a little uh, cover over his throat because he smoked cigars all his life and got a, a laryngeal cancer and had a laryngectomy uh, in about 1949. <clears throat> oh, they, they would have been um, 50 years plus um, 25, oh, 70, <clears throat> yeah. And these are all, I think these are sisters. Uh, and this man, I don't know. I think he just sneaked in the back door. Now this was this is Grandma Hannah, uh, Carl's mother, who's looked like she was pretty determined and strong person. Chub. Yeah. So this is more of the family. There's uh, Hannah. Chubb and Emery. There's where Emery came from. Oh, okay. So, okay. 
here's here's Emery, who this was probably 19. If this is if this is Dad Harold, at age three, this would have been um, <clears throat> 1909 or or 1910. <clears throat> and uh, Emery was not very strong. I mean, he, he had some illness. But these are what he had. Uh, Carl had three or four sisters and a couple of brothers, and these are all of uh, the the rest of the people with their spouses. This man was the fire chief, or yeah, fire chief at Santa Ana. Um, <clears throat> I don't remember which is the youngest. Well, the youngest of that group was Alice, who might have been here, who died early. So this um, was probably in Santa Ana because most of the Huntington's lived there, but but the house looks so much like the ones that grandma and grandpa lived in in Chino, and they had a barn in back, but it wasn't in this position. It was right back behind this house. And John, at age three, climbed up the ladder and up on top of the barn. Yeah, this is this. Yeah, so this this is not in Chino, but the situation is similar. Yeah, um, yeah. This is Uncle Mont, the uh, fire chief. Yeah. So these are the names that you can, you know, Emery, Emery Giles, H Hannah, we saw them together. Helen was a sister. This was the uh, sister that died and dad was down here. And then Laura and Lester, they played tennis into their eighties. Cora and her husband and Ethel and Mont. So you can go back and forth. Yeah. So there's um, Dora with dad at age, what, two? probably in uh, Gardena. And this is the one at um, Newport, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there's um, there's dad. So there's this is uh, Harold at Newport Beach. Yeah, so this is this is Albert and Dora. Carl was probably taking the picture, and here's uh, Harold. And uh, these might have been sisters, um, uh, Carl's sisters. I don't know. Uh, this was a Christmas dinner in about 1910, and um, in Santa Ana. And then here's everybody sitting. And this is uh, Harold. And these, uh, Harold's right here. <coughs> he was in motion. Everybody else was behaving. <laughs> so these are all mainly Carl's brothers and sisters and their spouses. Yeah, and didn't smell real nice. <laughs> Harold at about nine or 10 years old, which would be with his mom, Dora, at about 1917. So dad, um, for some reason, decided to go to Oregon State and uh, took engineering and then dropped out and went into pharmacy. But at some point he was in the Mikado and I think here he, here he is in, in drag. <laughs> <laughs> uh i don't know it might if it maybe it was before <laughs> so they they did meet at least by two, 1927 and they hit it off pretty well but mom in her little note said to somebody oh she wrote a lovingly letter to uh dora and carl uh just as they were about to get married. And uh, she promised not to take him away from them. And that uh, she, when she was uh, thinking about a boy that it was her 50-50 rule, she had to be sure that the boy was at least as interested in her as she was in her, him before she showed any sign of, of caring. So it must've worked out. <clears throat> you know, so they were, 
I guess, pretty interested in each other by now. That she'd he'd passed the 50-50, but there were a few tests along the way. She found him smoking one time. And and the other test was she thought he was serenading another girl or signed another girl's dance card, and she was not speaking with him. And they went for that walk west of town out in the pastures, and mom was still not speaking. And then a cow out in the pasture went, mmm. and dad said, if you do, you'll have to clean it up. <laughs> and so that broke mom down. <laughs> Well, dad was doted over all those, all those ants. And he was the first one along. He got, he was doted and, but he was always a ladies man. The ladies that would come into the drugstore and not a, in a romantic way, he was just took very, very good care of, of ladies when they would come in. So we'll start back with mom now. Yeah, she was, she was a fireball. And we all faced periods of embarrassment and pride almost at the same time with her. <laughs> this was her mom and dad, Oscar and Fanny, and they had 11, uh, nine children. And um, he was a farmer. And uh, when mom was in the memory care center, one of the aides asked her, what did your dad do? And she said, well, he lost farms. So that was, they, they, had, a, they had a pretty hard scrabble life. He had a gambling problem a little bit, and but he, he sang and was one of the little group, um, the, the uh, corn something or others uh, trio. Yeah. And he would sing to his children uh, to teach them lessons about life. This was uh, our grandma, Tony, uh, Fanny, in later years. And she was short and she would travel to her different kids around uh, the country. And uh, when she would come to our place, she would stay as long as she needed to, to darn all the socks. And then she would go. And Deanne would run around the house trying to find socks or, or pull holes in socks so that grandma wouldn't leave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she was fun, fun lady and, um, you know, gave a lot of humor to the rest of her kids. Oh, <clears throat> so Brian asked how long uh, Oscar lived and it was till 1927. And he died in the Salem Hospital during surgery for a, a kidney cancer. And uh, they got the, the cancer out, but he um, lost enough blood that he didn't come out. And mom and dad were close by then, and they went together to the hospital. They were in the waiting room, and they saw um, Wyman University uh, students running up and down the stairs donating blood. And in those days, they might have just donated directly from and without typing or anything that might have been the cause of his death is a reaction i don't know no that was my, that was uh, oscar yeah oscar he had add 27 to about 20 57 no he was in his mid 50s yeah so this is mom um this is after she fell off the covered wagon oh the little one and her older sister Gertrude. And they had traveled by covered wagon from Jacksonville near Medford to Bandon where they camped. And on the trip, mom fell off the buckboard and the wheel almost ran over her, but uh, the horse knew to stop and Claire brought him to a stop or else none of us, well, at least I wouldn't, John and I wouldn't be here. Yeah, and there's, there's proper little proper little Clarabelle. And um, this one right here. And this this would have been um, probably, uh, I think it was Guy. It looks more like Rodney. And Gertrude. Yeah. 
and Clarabelle, and I'm assuming Pete and maybe Oscar. It it has to be, I think. And they had their favorite horse, Bill, but out of the picture. So mom went down to the stream, probably close to this age, to um, fish, and she stole Gertrude's fishing pole, her favorite pole, and uh, while she was fishing, fell in and went down into the water and remembers how it wasn't so scary. And But she would have drowned. But I think uh, Gertrude ran down there and saved her and then scolded her for stealing her uh, fishing pole. <laughs> I, I don't know, but yeah, but I've heard that a person drowning might get to that point where you're not struggling anymore and you're just kind of, so this is all nine of them. Can you name them? John and I raced through them as we were growing up. Starting in the front row, <clears throat> from left to right are the youngest to the oldest of the brothers. So uh, Ross, Keith, Oscar, Guy, Amsey, and Claire. And in the back row are the sisters, ranging from uh, left to right, oldest to youngest. Gertrude, Clarabelle, and Elizabeth, also known as Annie Pete. So there she is in high school, uh, Claire Bell, and she was on the um, basketball team so in, in Coke Hill High, and there she is, and then here's uh, Gertrude. Huh? Older, a couple of years older. She, she became a teacher, and she, she trained in Monmouth that was called the normal, uh, Oregon Mo Normal School. Yeah. And uh, mom oh. was at Oregon State, and one day they decided to walk, let's to meet each other halfway. Um, and then um, Gertrude went back to the abandoned area and taught for just a couple of years and then got married and um, became a farmer's wife. Uh, So there she is, and she 
by that time had her eye on Harold, and you can kind of see it. <laughs> so here she is as a young mother in Pasadena, raising her peas or something or other, and John and Deanne uh, were born there. And then, uh, this would have been um, about 1941 or so. Dan must have been nine, John four, some, uh, probably Laguna. A few years later, 1944, um, every year we would go to the Rose Parade and dad would always bring a ladder. And um, yeah, we were dressed for it. So here we are in Pomona. Yeah. With a 54 Pontiac, probably uh, uh, Amzies in the parking lot, and our dog Cola. Yep, that was Cola. And uh, this is, I think, after we moved to uh, Ontario in 1957, and they had opened their drugstore. And here's the first drugstore they own. And it's because of uh, Don Dressen, Dot and Don. Uh, willing to loan mom and dad $10,000 at that time, which was a huge amount that allowed them to get over the hurdle and uh, buy the drugstore. These are the carefully wrapped Kotex, Kotex and Modex bo bo boxes that, that I got to wrap. So this would be the counter. They Dad called this the case. And John and I, I don't know if you, you were there to, to dust uh, the bottles and so forth. And uh, got acquainted with uh, nitroglycerin, which is up on the top. And he said, don't dare drop that. And I don't know whether he's serious or not. C can can nitroglycerin in a bottle explode? <laughs> I get, we're getting no, two no's from Brad and Brian. <laughs> now, this is also a very sensitive counter where some customers would come and whisper that they wanted something. And uh, John, can you tell the story? Well, well, one time the pharmacist wasn't there and somebody was in, in need of condoms. <laughs> well, mom was there and she wasn't hearing very well. And the man asked for uh, four X's. And she said, um, is this for wet work or dry work? <laughs> And she thought she thought he, he was asking for Caradex, hand, hand lotion. <laughs> so the guy left. <laughs> so um, this was uh, 74, just two years before dad died. And they're very close friends, Dot and Don Dress, and they, they travel. Oh, this is this is Jolie. <laughs> Isn't she the cutest little thing? Looks a little bit like her son there. <laughs> and mom was in great shape. There she is, uh, probably at the top of uh, Ice House Canyon. And she was a lady sometimes, and uh, other other times just a proud mama and. And then Brad, oh, Brad, oh, the other Brad, uh, with with his sense of humor and his art, uh, made these cards for her, um, what, 71st, 75th birthday. I beg your pardon. <laughs> it is kind of, it is kind of scary. I, I know. Oh, well, it was honor of her, though. Her 75th birthday. Well, I mean, they were pre-celebrating. Pre so this is this is the site of many, many happy memories. So, so speaking of who made a sound just a while ago, this this fellow cleared the bench. <laughs> That was the, yeah. <laughs> the door was flung open and people I think went went out the windows. <laughs> and it was a silent one. It was a silent one. Oh so, um among the many things that happened in that little kitchen uh, was Brad and Troy and Sarah. 
this might have been Brian. Uh, and in the backyard uh, was famous for uh, mom locking Joliet when she was, what, three? This Sarah and Teresa. We all have fond memories of events in the backyard. This one happens to be uh, Brad Jacobs and, and um, Jared and um, Uncle Mock uh, experimenting with a, a water hose and what you could do with one. And Jared was quite interested. Other activities in the past of basketball games, and one of them was a particular of interest to Jolie. Uh, uh, Ken Klepfer was playing among several uh, other friends, and uh, I didn't know it. Uh, this was 10 years after graduation from high school that, that he was wearing a wig. Well, Ken was uh, teasing Jolie by tugging on her pigtails, so Jolie got back by tugging on his hair, which happened to be a wig, and it came off and to everybody's surprise. Um, that was a <clears throat> embarrassing and funny moment for everyone. Uh, let's see what else has happened there. Uh, John and I blew up the um, big uh, stone incinerator once, uh, putting uh, avocado branches and leaves and then white gas and then more branches and leaves and lighting a match to it. Uh, Dad had just spent uh, many dollars uh, repairing that, uh, so we were in a bit of trouble. And then uh, here's um, another event. So we were we were whispering sweet nothings to Anya here. She was interested. And then Anya went spelunking, and uh, <laughs> her mother <laughs> ran to the rescue. <laughs> Oh, I can come out, she says. And Jared was helping her come out. No, I don't. Well, we might have long ago. And, uh, let's see. It was at her 80th. And Tony Bellatrudy. Yeah, Don, Tony Bellatrudy and Don Dressen. And um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, my 80th. Yep. Yeah. I think this is Mrs. Bellatrudy. Or no, uh, how about Mary Lucas? Uh, she, yeah, she would have worn a fancy thing like that. So um, mom went to her uh, 60th reunion in 1988 when Carol and I were married. There she is there. Right here. There's the uh, fine, fine ladies. Must have been at um, day uh, Brian your wedding, Brian. Yeah. Brian and Sue would come visit at our other house in Corvallis. Oh yeah, her birthday. Yeah. yeah. And then um, I don't know where this was, but I'm getting towards the end, she kept her sense of humor. And uh, Carol would entertain mom with all kinds of things, creating uh, wonderful creations. <clears throat> and we would, yeah, we kept her busy. She kept us busy. It kept Carol busy anyway. And uh, she she would want to help. She want to do anything that would be work. And when she would mow, she would lean back on this thing so the blades were. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the her little children and then uh, she made this long trip you know a lot, not too long before she died I don't know when this was we all sat on that tree oh it is huh? burned so this was her um, memorial service. Uh, didn't uh, Teresa Mentonia draw that? Uh, this was the uh, <clears throat> Hallelujah Chorus for Mom. It was turned out. Tone, he's 90. So you can read the lyrics here and uh, <clears throat> even look at the musical score. And then just these are just other 
picture of her family. That's our grandma Tony, uh, Fanny, uh, Jim, cousin Jim, uh, cousin Dean. Oh, I'm not look. I'm not helping you. Grandma Fanny, uh, cousin Dean, cousin. I mean, cousin Jim, cousin Dean, dad Harold, uh, Gertrude, Garald. I think this is you, John, and Rodney. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this <clears throat> Amzi, probably at age <clears throat> 80, and yeah, he is looking good. <clears throat> and with his, one of his tractors. And um, Annie Pete and Annie Gertrude. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and they built, they each built each other's house. They helped each other build their house, um, you know, modest size home with, on a plan, but they did the physical work to build the houses. Uh, then <clears throat> this is Dan and cousin Ruth, who died just a year ago. Oldest cousin, Claire's daughter, uh, Alma, Jim's wife, uh, Joanne and Brown, who is uh, Amzie's oldest daughter. Me and Carolyn, Dean's wife, uh, Marion, uh, Amzie's second daughter, and Jim. So this this is, um, I think, mom's favorite brother with um, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this was Oscar's um, Big Red uh, Peterbeck truck. And this was meant for off-road use. Uh, you can see the huge engine. And this was with after Claire had died, and we met at uh, MC. I mean, a guy in Viola's house in Beakersfield. And Elizabeth and Neil. Neil grew up in uh, eastern Kentucky in the hills, kind of in the hollers. Uh, he, he was in a logging camp on the coast and she was cooking. And he was one of those awful Democrats and the rest of us couldn't really stomach that. But he was, um, yeah. And that's Cola again. <clears throat> yeah, with a, with a big fig tree. Yeah, for a while, yeah. Uh. Yeah, and <laughs> Guy, Viola, Mom, Pete, Ross, and uh, uh, Viola, I mean, um, Iba. So these are the Ross, Keith, Oscar, Elizabeth, Gertrude, Guy, and Amzie in about 1980.